And the first news that we get to comes from Northwestern, where Kane Coulter is, of course, the quarterback who's done playing at Northwestern, looking to have potentially an NFL career. He has been leading a group of Northwestern players to try to become a union. Basically, uh, they have gathered signatures on the Northwestern football team to petition with the National Labor Relations Board to become a union. There's an awful lot of steps that would have to happen there on afterwards for things to happen. Coulter basically said they need someone looking out for their best interest. They're looking for improved concussion care, full cost of attendance scholarships as well. Statements have been released on this because this has become national news. Let's get to one of them. This is Jim Phillips, the athletic director at Northwestern. Northwestern University always has and has been and continues to be committed to the health, safety, and academic success of all of its students, including its student athletes. The concerns regarding the long-term health impacts of playing intercollegiate sports, providing academic support and opportunities for student athletes are being discussed currently at the national level, and we agree that they should have a prominent voice in those discussions. We are pleased to note that the Northwestern students involved in this effort emphasize that they are not unhappy with the university, the football program, or their treatment here, but are raising the concerns because of the importance of these issues nationally. Northwestern believes that our student athletes are not employees and collective bargaining is therefore not the appropriate method to address these concerns. However, we agree that the health and academic issues being raised by our student athletes and others are important ones that deserve further consideration. A lot to get to from all of that. We've got a former player. We've got a former player and coach. Let me start with you. Your overall thoughts on this news. Well, when I think of unions, I think back to history class where uh, the reason unions started was because workers were being abused. They weren't being treated fairly. And, and so something in Kane Coulter's experience must feel like it's been unfair, that he hasn't been treated right. I don't think it could be just that he's heard things from other programs. Uh, he oftentimes, he brought this up during a season with APU about medical care. Maybe medical care is a problem for college athletes. I've never really e experienced that. The one thing I would, uh, I, there's a couple of things I'd say. Number one, good for Kane Coulter to speak out, although I think he's misguided or he's had a bad experience. And number two, for him to think that no one's advocating for the players, I think is a gross misstatement. Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten, spent most of media days advocating for the players. By way of example, what Jim Delaney wants to do is give Stanley Jackson a, a, a scholarship for the rest of his life. So if you or I would leave campus, we could go back literally at the age 60 and continue our athletic scholarship. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. For Kane Coulter to say that Concussions are not being addressed. I went, when I was at Penn State's practice, when I was at Michigan's practice, they adjusted their drills. The coaches were advocating for it. So what, what they do at Northwestern in the drills, I, maybe I didn't see it that day. But I think there's a lot of concern by coaches, administrators, for the medical condition of our players and for continued education and in every aspect of their life. Well, I think Coach is right. Every player's experience is different. You know, at Ohio State, we had the best facilities. We did eat good meals. And typically, we got pretty good treatment there. So every player's experience is different. But number one, I want to tip my hat to Kane Coulter. To take this step and put yourself out there in a leadership role, I think is impressive. Whether we agree with him or not, speaking his mind and laying it on the table is the right thing to do for him right now. And I think when I look at the proposal, there's some areas, Coach, that I can agree with. I, there are a lot of my former teammates who played just college football, never went on to play in the NFL or the CFL, and they have injuries that are lingering and they can't deal with them because they can't afford the medical expenses. So I like that aspect. And at the same time, I think there's this groundswell where players are watching, seeing their jerseys sold for $100. You know, the salaries are raising with the players and as well with the administrators. And they see that and they want a piece of it. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong, but there's a groundswell. And I think Kane is leading that charge. Yeah, but when you start talking about apparel now, Stan, that's altogether different. Because if you're the starting quarterback, then if they sell your jersey, then you should be paid. But the second team offensive lineman that's wearing number 52, they're not selling his jersey. So does that mean that you're 
scholarship is now better than mine. So once you get into that narrative, then we're, then, we're, then we're then we're talking about professional athletics, and most of the college athletics athletes are not going to play in the professional. So you start paying the high profile guys in college, the whole system falls apart. There used to be this old concept that, and Woody Hayes used to say it. Woody Hayes used to say this: If I give a kid a full scholarship and he doesn't graduate, we we have lost. We haven't paid him enough for what he's done for Ohio State University. If he comes and he graduates, then it's an even deal. You've worked your butt off and you walk away with the degree from Ohio State. That was an original concept that is getting clouded right now. But most players, they still live by that concept because most players aren't going to play in the NFL. And by the way, you mentioned the fact that television deals and all this are rising in cost. Attendance for college is way more expensive now than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago as well. Uh, and that's something that the athletes are currently getting. Let me get to the Big Ten Conference statement. They released something today that says the Big Ten Conference does not believe that full time students participating in intercollegiate athletics are employees of the universities that they attend. That said, the Big Ten Conference has the utmost respect for both the legal system and the rights of students to pursue their belief through that system. Anything in that language jump out to you? Well, no, but what it makes me think about is this could be individual school based. I, I mean, you look at the facilities at Oregon, your experience at Ohio State sounds like it was totally positive. My experience at Notre Dame was totally positive. I didn't want for anything. I don't think the players at Oregon want for anything. I don't think the players at Ohio State want for anything. So maybe there's some schools that aren't up to speed on some of these issues. And maybe this isn't a college football issue. Maybe it's an individual school issue. I can see that. I'm not saying we didn't want for anything. There were times we were hungry. Getting a scholarship doesn't guarantee that you live a perfect life because we all come from different socioeconomic backgrounds. And I think maybe there should be a stipend. I'm not exactly sure how you do it. Yeah. Let them be like Olympic athletes. If Subway wants to sponsor them, let that occur. But first, they have to be proven to be employees. And I think that's a tall order for the players. I think there's a precedence already for the NC2A proving that they're not. So the players have the burden of proof they have to prove out that they are employees. And then once that happens, now you have a ball rolling. But, but I really believe that this is an important issue. I think the problem is the problem with any relationship. In my marriage, it's very important for me to communicate with my wife. If I don't communicate the vision of our household, then she's a little confused. Well, I think this happens in college sports. Very rarely do players get to communicate with coaches or administrators or you know the leaders of the conference to know exactly what they're advocating on our behalf, what's on the horizon, for us and what we can see change in the future. And I think that's a part of the problem. Let's translate the message to the players so they're aware of all the good work that's going on behind the scenes. But Stanley, how could a college athlete right now not think that the administrators and the coaches are working to protect them with concussions? I mean, for you to tell me that we need a union to, pe to protect our children to play college football, that tells me that these players are around the most despicable people in the world. Because if these people have to be faced with a union before they start protecting our children? What kind of world are we living in? And that's the accusation. The accusation is we need a union to make progress with concussions. What is that a sad statement about the people that are running college football? Right. Well, I mean, I you're think, condemning college football. I think the concussions are a small part of it. I think there are other aspects. Well, what's their biggest message? I still don't know well, what the message is. They want to well, see at the table, but I don't. I don't know what they want to say they, when they, they get to the table. They've got to get together and get their message. But there are things that are occurring. Fifty percent of uh, college football players are graduating right now. That percentage is not good enough. And then you can look at some programs where if you're not performing on a field and they take too many recruits in the fall, then they're somehow trying to take your scholarship back. Agreed. So, so Agreed. every coach isn't problem. doing a great job. Just and it, it, I agree, it is an individual school problem, an individual coach problem, but a collective voice sometimes sheds a light on what's happening and maybe you can see change. So I don't think it's all across the board. By and large, most of my college experience was very good, but I could see some subtle changes that would have made it even better, would have made me a better student athlete and would have made you know my overall so uh, experience a, a little better. What would a union have done for you? Well I'm not a big union guy number one well, so I'm not you? sure um, other than I don't know how you can get 1600 
individuals to agree across the board because what, what ultimately is going to happen if they have a union, you're going to have to strike in order to get what you want. And it's difficult to do that. When I was Bob Hoying's backup, if Bob was going to strike and not play against <laughs> Notre Dame, against Michigan, guess right. what? I was going to seize the opportunity. So it's a difficult thing to do. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to get from the you union. You crossed the picket line, huh? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think what you said, too, about having a clear message. It, you said that back when the APU thing happened with the message on right. the wristbands back in the fall. And, and no dynamic we, leadership, no clear message. How can it be a movement? 